Uh, great to see everybody this morning, and I hope you are enjoying these. Uh, I guess we're not into a full completed day yet today, but uh, the beautiful weather yesterday and today, and uh, we're going to get some more sun over the course of the next week. So I hope everybody's able to get out and enjoy uh, uh, intro to the spring, so to speak, and uh, hope you guys are doing well. Appreciate Mark Contos uh, doing the welcome and sharing. And uh, wow, I didn't know that Mark was a, a horse breeder. That's amazing, right? And, you know, just the experience God gave him to see the sun rising every morning. And uh, that was great. It's great to uh, hear Decker share about his manager and sorry for his passing. And we'll say a prayer for his wife and kids. But, uh, I love uh, uh, what Mark said in regards to the contribution or rather uh, Eric, right? To, to choose faith over fear. And uh, actually I, I had not talked to uh, Eric about what to say. And as the spirit would have it, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. In fact, I didn't even have a title for my lesson, but guess what the title's gonna be now? Choose faith in Jesus over fear. Choose faith in Jesus over fear. A couple of announcements. This is the last week of the month. As we know, February is a shorter month. And so you'll have house church midweeks this Wednesday and you'll have house church Sunday. Uh, this last Sunday of the month. So I hope you guys have a, a great time and uh, looking forward to our Seekers and Shepherds meeting and, and uh, we'll have a great time discussing the lesson and Shannon and I giving them some direction and practicals for you guys to be able to have a great time of fellowship and, and draw closer to God and become more like Jesus. Uh, I'm excited about the conference that's coming up. Uh, would let J justice roll in March. If you are able to attend, I would encourage you. I, I know some of those individuals. Actually, several years ago, uh, we were going, uh, myself and uh, a couple of other brothers and sisters and a whole host of other brothers and sisters were going down to Tuskegee years ago uh, for an inaugural service uh, down there. And uh, we were able to meet, meet on that historical uh, 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 Black Campus, uh, HBCU University. And uh, one of the speakers actually will be Dr. Ben Barnett, who has his doctorate in, in diversity and race relations. Uh, and uh, as we were uh, driving around Tuskegee in the area, uh, we were, uh, forget who we were with now, but uh, many of, yeah, we were with Jack. Some of you know Jack at North River. Jack is full of love and energy and, and uh, but uh, he actually knew the civil rights leader that is going to speak at that conference. And we were trying to catch up with him, wasn't able to catch up with him uh, that particular day, but uh, that'll be great to hear. But also uh, very close and dear to our own family, to the Ivy family is uh, Dr. Jamila Mishner. She has decided two of my four daughters and still to this day is involved in their lives. And uh, so it will be great to, to hear her. And uh, there'll be a host of other uh, great men and women. I, I love that the church is appro approaching, you know, this fight for justice biblically, right? That Jesus is justice. And so uh, excited about that coming up uh, next month. Uh, let's uh, go to the Father in prayer, and we'll have the lesson for this morning. God, we do pray for uh, Eric's boss and uh, his wife now and two children that are without him. I pray that they feel your presence. I pray that uh, we know that prayers are powerful and that they are comforted and that you comfort Eric uh, with the, the loss of his boss and his friend, that it wasn't just uh, a, a worker or uh, he was not just a subordinate to uh, his boss, but he was a friend. Thank you for the example uh, of his life and, and how he uh, tried to model himself after you. Pray for uh, today's lesson and uh, 
pray that uh, you will go before me and spirit, you will speak and that we can be inspired, Jesus. We're just so thankful that you're not a reactive God, but you are proactive, that you always have answers of hope and uh, a future and uh, you always have a solution. We thank you that you're part and you are the solution in the midst of all that we're dealing with, uh, that you hold all the answers for us, our nation, and uh, uh, just even globally. We love you. So in your son's name we pray, amen. So if you would, turn over to uh, Mark in chapter six. And uh, the lesson is entitled, Inspired by Eric Decker and his boss. I changed it a little bit but to choose faith in Jesus over fear. Choose faith in Jesus over fear. Many of us have read this passage. Maybe you've read it as recently as this morning. Maybe you have not read it in a long time. But uh, we're gonna look at verses one through seven and we're gonna put a pen in Isaiah chapter seven for a little bit here. Uh, I thought it would be great after a lot of prayer and studying you know, on Wednesday night, we talked about the humanity of Jesus and how Jesus relates and can identify with our weaknesses and our challenges. And yet what separated him as much as he related and can identify and was empathetic and is empathetic with all that we go through. And when we fall, he didn't sin. And, and, and that's the, the glory that we have in our relationship with Jesus that he was both the son of man and the son of God. And so I thought it would be great to continue talking about choosing faith in Jesus over fear. And when we do that, man, do we see, I think even Eric mentioned in the contribution, man, I, I wanna see God do awesome things. I wanna see God do great things in my life that we serve a great God. We don't serve a minimal God. We don't serve an average God. We don't serve a good God. We don't even serve just a great God. We serve an unbelievable God that can do unbelievable things, such as, as the song said that we heard at the intro, the testimony of going from death to life. That was one of the lyrics in the opening song. Do you still remember that? When you went from death to life, think about what your family would be like, what you would be like if you are a parent as a dad, if you were still dead spiritually, what you would be like as a mom, if you were still dead spiritually, what you would be like as a single or a campus student or a more mature adult, if you were dead spiritually, that however long ago, because of the resurrection of Jesus, you went from death to life, that's a miracle. My question is, do we still feel, do we still believe like we did then in the great miracles that Jesus can do? in choosing faith in him over fear. And so we pick up with this setting in Mark chapter six with Jesus. In verse one, he went away from there and came to his hometown as his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astonished saying, where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Not just works, not just good works, things they had never seen. That's what happened in your life, something that you had never seen when that man or woman stepped into your life. When they opened up the book of life, God revealed to you things you had never seen. He changed your life in ways in which we could have never imagined for where we are right now. And so they're asking the question, how does he do these mighty works? In verse three, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary 
and brother of James and Jose and Judas and Simon are not his sisters here with us. And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. You know, I think it takes a lot for God to be marveled. When the scriptures speak of Jesus saying and thinking to himself that in short, he is amazed at their lack of faith in him. He's amazed that they've given into the fears of their life over him and he can only do a few things, a few works. The Bible even says he couldn't do anything mighty there, but he laid his hands on a few people and healed them. When's the last time you've experienced miracles in your life? Like your resurrection of your soul. When's the last time you, you saw God work mighty in your life. Like when you put Jesus on as Lord, when he changed your whole being inside and out. When you marveled at how God worked and what he did. When's the last time you've experienced that or we've experienced that as a church? Mighty works. And I'm, I'm not talk, talking about, you know, getting the job you want. That's great. I'm talking about things that only can happen by the hand of God. How recent has it been? You know, it's so interesting to me. This is a fascinating first seven passages in the opening of Mark chapter six. You know, Matt, I never want to stop ever believing that God can do mighty works in his church and in my life personally. I've seen that happen in my life and it was because I chose fear over my faith in God. I don't ever want to see that again. Man, maybe you like me, you've seen God do mighty things. Man, I remember my wife having a heart attack and us going in years later and God having done miracles in her heart as we listened to the doctors give her prognosis moving forward. We were in awe. I remember three of my four daughters becoming disciples in less than one year. It was amazing. And the son-in-law and the granddaughter not soon after. I remember my dad becoming a disciple at nearly 80 years of age. Mighty works and his wife. I remember when we moved to Los Angeles, the church was about 2,500. By nine or eight years, we were nearly 10,000 disciples in the city of Angels. Just amazing. I remember God taking our little group of 63 in less than eight years to over 600 within the LA church. Just amazing things. That was some time ago. I remember just eight years ago, moving to North River in Atlanta. They were probably about four to 500 
By the time we left, just after four years of being there, there were nearly eight to 900 disciples. Just, you just saw the auditorium from week to week, month to month, year to year fill up. People were coming from all over the country. Renewed my faith in many ways. But that's still kind of a long ago. Just as recently as two and a half years ago, Sharon and I, three years or so ago, we met a couple in Huntsville, JD and Claudette, Caribbean couple. They asked Sharon, Anton, would you disciple us? Disciple us? They took a church of about 12 to 15 disciples. And now at this point in about four years, they're 50 disciples plus. We appointed them two years ago as a women's ministry leader and evangelist. Mighty works. People are moving to Huntsville like people want to get hotcakes. They are growing unbelievably. Even in our own lives, Shannon and I came here locally and we're happy to come here and fired up. And in less than five years, God asked us to serve the entire Southeast region. And not only that, but Anton, I want to demonstrate my power so much. I want you and Sharon to be servants of mine in the midst of a 100 year pandemic. And on top of that, I want you to with the partnership team and all the brothers and sisters that serve as full-time ministry leaders and women servant leaders and evangelists to take the region from one to two in the midst of all that's going on. Man, I remember when Hayden almost didn't make it, the hue of the sun. You guys remember that miracle? I remember us praying fervently and you would not know that today. Amazing, mighty works. As I got on the video this morning, I heard Casey talking about his birthday coming up. I remember campus just a year and a half, two ago, the brothers and sisters that became Christians, Jacob and Sydney and his relative, all out there in Seymour. Miracles happened. How about Daryl's cancer going in remission, remission and curse? Miracle, mighty works. When's the last time you've seen mighty works done in your life and collectively as a church family? Because you chose faith in Jesus over fear. You know, it's interesting. Jesus was teaching effectively and wisely throughout Nazareth, but the people in his hometown saw him only as a carpenter. They were offended. He, he's only a carpenter. That, doesn't he have brothers and sisters just like we do? He just has a job, just, he has the same job as a, in fact, I work with him. They were offended. They said, he's no better than we are. You know, I would never have thought that I felt that way about Jesus. But when I look at the time where I've not seen mighty works, that's exactly how my actions were. I stopped walking on water personally or giving myself as a vessel to God's kingdom. And 
I just was seeing a few aspects of my life change that God laid his hand on, but I wasn't seeing miracles. I wasn't seeing mighty works. It's interesting how as time passes or we face adversity, we can allow Satan to diminish our faith in Jesus. And as a result, we determine the miracles or lack thereof in our lives and in our church. It really is a relationship. They saw Jesus as a common laborer and they were offended that others could be impressed by it. You ever felt that way? You ever felt like, man, what? Okay, they're just over the top. Those brothers and sisters, they're just, they're just fired up. They're just, it's just too much. They're just, they're just excited too much. They, 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 you know, they're too impressed with God. And yet God is doing miracle after miracle in their life personally and in their church. But those men and women rejected the authority of, the, of Jesus, right? I mean, man, sometimes it's, it's difficult letting Jesus have full authority, right? We, we gave him that. We made that decision years or months or weeks ago. But man, sometimes our human nature, we just take back aspects of our life and we say, I'm going to give in to, I'm going to put more trust in my fear than my faith in you to change this situation outside of me or within me. And so we don't, we don't see these mighty works done inside of us or outside of us. We just see the laying on of God's hand in a few situations and we're like, amen. And yet God can do so much more. You know, in verse four, talks about how Jesus is a prophet. In other words, he's a, he's a worker for God but he wasn't honored in his own town. But you know, that didn't make his works any less important. I think sometimes when we see adversity or things don't continue to go well from the miracles that Jesus did, for instance, like the brothers and sisters that got converted out in Seymour and they wandered off. Then we say, oh, we kind of say, oh, you know, ah, that wasn't a mighty word. Or time goes on and, and we forget how Hayden was healed miraculously. Or how Daryl's cancer or Kurt's cancer has gone into remission miraculously. And so when we face some fears or some adversities, then we diminish the power of God and what he's done. That didn't make Jesus' work any less important. A person doesn't need to be respected or honored to be useful to God. They didn't respect Jesus. They didn't want to honor him. They were offended. They didn't want to be impressed anymore. They said, oh man, he's just a carpenter. Man, he's got brothers and sisters just like me. I cut wood just like him didn't keep Jesus from going elsewhere. If friends and neighbors or family don't respect your Christian work, don't let their rejection keep you from serving God. It's not gonna minimize Jesus' power. I appreciated what Decker had to say. Man, I, I wanna honor my friend, my bosses, theme statement. <clears throat> he chose faith, a widow, and two kids. I'm going to choose faith. I'm going to choose the miracles. I'm going to choose the mighty works over fear. And we're going to keep moving forward. And we're going to see God continue to work great things in our lives. Although we're hurting, although we're suffering, although we're mourning, 
So much so, it's resonated with the Deckers. You know, what's interesting, you look in verse five, Jesus could have done greater miracles in Nazareth, but he chose not to because of people's pride and unbelief. You know, it's interesting. Jesus does have boundaries. Like if we choose to place our faith more in fear than him, at a certain juncture, he says, okay, amen. Let me go look for people that want to be used to see me do mighty works, not just a laying on a few hands. You look over in Proverbs in chapter eight. And in verse 13, the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. You know, man, I've seen the times where I have, I have lessened the authority of God in my life because of my pride and he wasn't able to do mighty works in me or me be a part of God's great family and see him do great things in his church. It's interesting how we, we play a part in that. And I look back now in those moments and I see how my lack of humility affected not just me personally seeing God do mighty works in my life or my family or my children or, or different, but in the church, like we are a body. Like it's very clear when you look at Mark chapter six, just the first seven verses, we're in this together. Don't think that our or your or my lack of faith in Jesus doesn't affect the whole in terms of him doing mighty works. We can live in denial if we want, but I've certainly seen droughts in my life. It's far from the truth. We are a body. And Jesus looks at us individually and collectively. And he says, wow. And he determines whether or not he's going to do mighty works. So he chose because of those individuals, the pride in Nazareth, he chose, you know what? I'll go elsewhere. They're, they're, they're content or rather they're happy with me just laying my hands on a few people and healing some people. And, and I can do so much more, but they're happy with that. You know, uh, It's interesting how Jesus couldn't have the impact he wanted because they didn't accept his message, right? I mean, we, we know God's message, don't we? We know God's message in the core of our souls. In Luke chapter 14, this is, this is what we said years or weeks or months ago. We, we know the message. In verse 25, right? Now great crowds accompanied him and turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, his wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. We know the message, right? But man, we also know, whoo, that is scary taking that kind of stand. We count at that cost. And we said, I choose faith in Jesus over fear. If it means my family, if it means my mother, if it means my wife, if it means my children, if it means my own life, 
I choose faith over fear so I can see God do mighty works. You ever been there? I had to do that. I've had to choose faith over fear with my wife. I have to speak the truth and love that I love God more than you. And this is what I believe God wants us to do. I've had to do that with my children to choose faith in Jesus over my fear of their response or how they will be. I've had to choose faith over fear with friends and loved ones and extended family members. But man, church, the payoff, the payoff is unbelievable. Mighty works. Mighty works. Unbelievable works. We know the message. It rings loud to this day in our hearts and our souls. In verse 27 of Luke 14, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost whether he has enough money to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation that's not able to finish, all who see it mock him, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. How are we going to finish? How are you going to finish? Now, I, I want to go out strong whenever I go. I want to go out seeing mighty works done in my life personally and in God's church. Knoxville, Huntsville, Nashville, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, North River, Alabama, Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi. I want to see God do mighty works with my children, my daughters, my son-in-law, my grandkids, my great-grandkids. Because when you lay it on the line, when you choose faith in Jesus over fear, mighty things happen. But when God sees that, we just are satisfied with a few laying on of the hands and some healing here and there, then it goes, find, goes to find vessels that want to see mighty works done. And we see it, right? We see it in Mark chapter 6. He goes on in verse 29, otherwise when he has laid the foundation, not able to finish it, everyone who sees him, all who see it began to mock him saying, this man Begil was not able to finish or what king is going out to encounter another king in a war will not sit down and first and deliberate whether he's able with 10,000 men to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Remember when you sat down and you counted the cost. I remember my spiritual birthday is coming up March 9th. Sharon's comes up this week. I'm so glad by God's grace, I'm still on fire for mighty works. There have been times in my life when I haven't been, but I'm so thankful that I believe in the power of Jesus still to do mighty things no matter what the adversity. Because my faith isn't in the miracles. My faith is in Jesus. And I counted that cost. It'll be 37 years ago. And I still believe Jesus is the 10,000. He's the 10,000 to whatever the other number is in my life or in my character or in my heart. Look over in Romans in chapter nine. I'll finish up, I'm sorry, in Luke 14. And he says in verse 32, if not while the others yet a great way off, he sends a delegation to act for terms of peace. 
So therefore, any one of you does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. And I, I see Jesus still calling me to renounce things in my life. What about you? He's still calling me to renounce things in my life so that if I choose to still be a vessel for him, I can see him do mighty works. There have been times in my life where I've, I've not renounced them. And I thank God for his grace and mercy for being patient. But I do know from the scriptures, he'll walk away and go find other vessels. Romans 9. In verse 23, in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory. Right, the, the, the miracles, the miracles inside. Ephesians 3, 16. The, the very aspects of our character that we wrestle with late at night that don't allow us to sleep, that cause us anxiety, that we don't have a peace of mind about. That according to the riches of his glory in Ephesians 3, 16, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Like, are you experiencing those miracles to choose faith over fear of conflict? That you'll see a miracle in God to give you the courage to deal with whatever it is, to see mighty works done. That, that inner being, that, that's a miracle, right? That's the same stuff that we said yes to when we made Jesus Lord. That, that power that changes us, that, that makes us even look different on the outside is so powerful. In fact, the Bible tells us when we experience those miracles of inner strength, we become radiant. The Bible tells us that we shine like stars in the universe, that we stand out. You've been there, right? I've been there. You've been in public, you've been around somebody. Man, I can tell you're a follower of Jesus. Are you a follower of Jesus? Man, I saw how you conducted yourself in that group. What church do you go to? What do you do for a living? What's your name? Mighty works. God wants to do mighty works in our life. You know, it's interesting. Jesus sent the disciples out two by two, right? They could have gone out one by one, but Jesus wanted them to be together so they could strengthen and encourage each other especially when they face rejection. Man, that's how we know we can continue to see mighty powers when we work together. When pride gets in the way and arrogance gets in the way, our refusal to renounce those aspects in our character that Jesus wants to continue to put to death so he can do mighty works, then we can't strengthen and encourage each other to keep moving forward faithfully in him. And so when we face rejection, it becomes just a few healings, his hand touching a few aspects of our life where we see him work. Our strength comes from God. But interesting enough, God meets many of our needs through the teamwork that we have with each other. Right, we see it all the time, sports, 
work, military. Man, God blesses, blesses, just adores unity. So today, as the downs get ready to lead us and take us to the cross, man, my hope is that no matter where we are, man, I, I don't want to settle for Jesus just laying a, his hands on a few people to see a few healings. My prayer and hope is that, man, we, I, you personally, individually, a unit, a family, a house church, a Bible talk, a church, a community, a region, a kingdom that we want to see mighty, mighty works done because of him. Let's get ourselves prepared for the downs to lead us in communion.